Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk. And those famous Nestle chocolate bars present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are testing a new spaceship out beyond the Saturn orbit. Suddenly, they find themselves on a collision course with another spaceship. That pilot must be crazy. He suddenly changed vector right toward us. He's not trying evasive action, so it's up to us. Fire starboard rockets. Commander, he's still coming at us. Half that ship is a robot controlled guided missile. If you don't blow it up, it's going to hit us. Stand by to fire space torpedoes. Standing by, sir. Fire number one. Commander, the torpedo controls are jammed. We're going to crash. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Image of Evil. <laughs> Got big news today, space patrollers. Exciting news for all of you. So quick, get pencil and paper and keep them ready by your radios. Because in just a little while, I'm going to tell you how you can get the latest, the greatest, newest surprise Commander Corey has for all of you. And here it is, the new Cosmic Rocket Launcher, an exact pocket-sized model of the giant rocket used by Commander Corey in today's Space Patrol adventure. Specially constructed of sleek, durable plastic, this neat rocket is a big six inches long with a snap-on double-deck scout car. It's positioned on a break-proof nylon launching cord, 33 feet long for distance flight. You can send it on its way by pressing the trigger on a stainless steel launching gun. And it travels down that cord with trigger fast speed. Hits the target and wham! Automatically launches the scout car. Yes, sir, a cosmic rocket launcher of your own means lots of fun, lots of action, too. So space patrollers, stand by. In just a few minutes, you're going to learn how you can get your own new sensational cosmic rocket launcher. And now today's Space Patrol adventure, The Image of Evil. In his central office in Space Patrol headquarters on the man-made planet Terra, Commander Corey examines a model rocket ship of unique design. Hearing voices at the door, Buzz carefully places the trim model back into an endurium case labeled Top Secret. As a civilian literally forces his way into the offices, despite the protest of Cadet Happy. Hey, just a minute! I've got to see Commander Corey. You can't just barge in here. No one else understands. All right, what's this all about? This man just pushed past the guard at the end of the hall. Uh, hold on, one of the I time. tried to it's stop him. It's all right, Happy. Now, mister, let's have your story. Believe me, Commander. I wouldn't have forced my way in here. I'm purely personal enough. Uh, there's something you ought to know right away. Now, right, get in here. Let's have it. Commander, Prince Pokerati has escaped. Prince Pokerati? Why, he's I in the... I saw him at the Lowell City Spaceport on Mars. Who are you? You think I'm crazy, don't you? Well, I'm Aaron Sarkane of Jupiter. And I can refer you to several prominent people who will vouch for my sanity and my reliability. Mr. Sarkane, I don't doubt your sincerity, but Prince Bakarati is undergoing treatment at the Criminal Rehabilitation Center on Venus. He's been there for months. And he won't be released or cured for nearly a year. Yes, yes, I, I know that. But I also know that the man I saw was Bakarati. Believe me, if there was the slightest doubt, I would merely have reported my suspicion to a minor authority on Mars instead of coming directly to you. If Bakarati had escaped, I wouldn't blame you for being concerned, but I think I can use him. We have personnel sent who will give us an answer. We have personnel section agent Grayson. Commander Corey here, Grayson. I need some information. Yes, Commander. Where at this moment is Prince Baccarati? Why, he's still in Venus rehab, sir. Oh, yes, I know, but at exactly what stage of the processing? Check with Venus and call me back immediately. Corey out. Yes, Commander. Now, Mr. Sarkane, if Baccarati had escaped, we have personnel center would have been notified. Oh. Here's I've made somewhat of a fool of myself tonight. Still, I'd spare the man I saw the priest for the man. Then you knew Baccarati personally? Not intimately. I had no dealings with the man. But I have met him some years ago. He's not the type of man one easily forget. I agree with you, Mr. Sarkin. However, there's several billion people in the solar system there are bound to be similarities. Well, I don't know which is the great in my embarrassment or my relief in knowing that that monster isn't loose. My apologies. It's all right, Mr. Sarkin. Thank you. Thank you very much. My apologies to you, too, for that I am. I'm sorry. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> Poor guy. He really thought he had a hot piece of news. Yes. He's not at all the excitable type. That's a surprise. 
Oh, speaking of surprises, I've got one for you, Hack. Open that box. Yes, sir. Hey, top secret. All right. Here we are. Wow. A model rocket ship. And what a beauty. Uh, but what's that other gadget? That's a launching device. This is a model of what you and I are going to test in a couple of days. The cosmic rocket launcher. Oh, so this is the secret project that Saturn tested. Right. right. It's an important new exploration and space search tool, Happy. See how the scout car attaches to the under part of the rocket ship? Yes, sir. Well, that scout car can be released to make short auxiliary searches or rescue missions. Here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I take that book with you. I'll turn the past cover and hold it out of arm's arm. That's on your side. Sir. Like this, sir? That's yes, fine. Now I'll put the rocket ship in the launching mechanism. Oh, it works something like a gun. Now, this model does, yes. Now, I'm going to fire the rocket at that book you're holding. Now, watch what happens to the scout car. Hey! As the rocket ship released the scout car when it hit the book. Mm-hmm. The release mechanism is in the nose of the rocket ship. Naturally, on the axis, the ship the scout car can be released in several different ways. Proximity, ejector, manual controls, and the ship or scout car. Oh, that's a wonderful gadget. May I work it once? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Now, hold it a minute. Headquarters, mandatory here. This is Grayson, rehab personnel center. I've got the data on Park Roddy. All right, Grayson. That's Park Roddy is in the suspended animation section. Venus rehab center. Now undergoing stage five of the correctional therapy process. Mm, Electro-reassociative orientation. No one could get him out of that. Right, sir. But that wasn't why your question surprised me a while ago. We've had four reports from various parts of the solar system from people who were certain they'd seen Prince Park Roddy. I think so. Over what period, Grayson? Oddly enough, those people making the reports weren't in the crackpot category. For all of them to be true, though, Dr. Wright would have to be on three different planets at the same time. Not even eight, do they? Yeah, right, Grayson. Well, thanks very much, Corey. Out. Well, that's settled that. Our team sure was imagining things. Perhaps. Uh-huh. Perhaps. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just thinking. Dr. Wright has been out of circulation for months. Now, within a short period, several people think they see him. From distance from Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, two men are in earnest conversation. Large man grins evilly. Aaron Sarkane speaks. Well done, Mr. Commander. Prove to me that I was right. The student of green drinks both of us. I pretended to be embarrassed in that. Good, Sarkane. Now I can move about openly. Thank you. I'm glad to see you. Believe me, it isn't easy to crash into Space Patrol headquarters and lie to Commander Corey. Huh? The bigger the lie, the less the risk. Tyrants, who the ages have proved that. And now, with my twin brothers safely in the Venus Rehabilitation Center, I can take over. I, Sultan Baccarati, can come into my rightful heritage as the true Prince Baccarati. And in the order of Baccarati is an imposter. A youth serpent. That's the three of your twin. You, Sarkane, being a commoner, a peasant, won't understand. Once my family will judge and controls most of the other planets. Yes, I know this for your name. How will you this be here that time? Although my brother and I were twins, I was born first by about ten minutes. But my evil twin was ambitious and conniving. He cheated me out of my birthright. Before he was fourteen, he vanished into the obscurity. You feel that my very life. I lived under another name. And your brother will be. Yes. But now, now he's in the Venus we have to live in. Now is my chance. I will become more powerful than he ever dreamed of being. And unlike my brother, I can move freely from planet to planet. Because of your brother? Yes. It took me years to find him. In his skin, the law-abiding men who look like me. And my twin brother. And I have hired men like you to report to the space patrol unit that Prince Bakarati was a <laughs> and now the space patrol is so tired of the reports that even the real Prince Baccarati would appear without being there. I am the real Prince Baccarati? Of course, that's what I mean. Some of my brother's secrets are in the space patrol park. In the cold, the space patrol hasn't been able to break. But wasn't your brother the Magrenograph test right after he was No. But the papers weren't discovered until my brother was in the rehabilitation center and under park testing. Your job, Sarkin, is to get those papers out of the pile. Yes. When the authorized agents are permitted. I know that. I have an exact duplicate of the credentials of the space patrol career. You will pose as the courier. You will go to the record division, section 18. Thank you, Major 
give me a pain, Commander. They turned in a ten-page report on what they had for breakfast. This one, for example. Oh, uh, you're filing a ton of wooden people, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Seriously. Our patrol pilot flashed a couple of spaceships full of crooks, and they tell the whole story in a ten-word spacegram. And then a messenger like Lieutenant Woodson writes a novel about his wallet. Lieutenant Woodson was only following orders, I think. He suspects somebody of tampering with his potential. Certain identification cards seem to be in a different order in the world. That's important. Remember, he has access to the weapons division. Considered it important enough to alert the records division guards against forged credentials. Oh, well, it just seems like a lot of red tape to me. <laughs> I guess I've got a cosmic rocket in my mind. I know, I see what happens. Well, as soon as we get this routine work out of the way, the sooner we'll blast off the Saturn. A surface car pulls up in a deserted parking area close to the Space Patrol records division building. Aaron starts in, touches an empty briefcase, and gets out of it. They stopped. They wouldn't stop you. You're wearing a space patrol lieutenant's uniform. And you got the proper credentials. Just that natural talking. <laughs> yes, but I'm a child. Don't worry. These clerks work by numbers. They want you to know that you're getting things but a lot of papers. And if they do, well, you got a ray gun. Now get going. A few moments later in Space Patrol Headquarters, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are reviewing the cosmic rocket launcher operations procedure when the emergency intercommunications alarm sounds. Just a moment, huh? Yes, sir. Headquarters, Commander Corey here. Emergency Division Section 18, Section Third Mark report, sir. Yes, Sergeant. Response to alert order HQ 1732, I will Go ahead. A courier is here in this section, Commander. Presented identification card number is... Is this man with you now? No, sir. I left you back in corridor H, file section 27B. I thought I'd better... No, 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 no! Hello, Sergeant. Sergeant Markham. Come on, Happy, and get to the elevator. We're going down to the records section. Swiftly, the elevator drops to the lower levels of the Space Patrol headquarters building, and Buzz and Happy hurry down a deserted corridor of the record division. Now, this way, Happy, here's section 18. Yes, sir. Commander, look, it's the guard. Sergeant Martin. Someone slugged him when he was on the uniform. Huh? I cut off the connection. Chances are whoever it was was coming. Get your rig on ready. Yes, sir. Hold it right where you are. Huh? Commander, it's Sarkane. All right, Sarkane, what are you doing in that uniform? I, uh, I couldn't explain everything, Commander. What have you got there? I'll give it to Happy. Yes, sir. Here you are. Yeah, and I'll just take that ray gun, Sarkane. He got in here with Lieutenant Woodson's duplicated credentials. What was he after, huh? Oh, they're these papers. They're the undeciphered code on Prince Baccarati. Well, Sarkin, you seem to have an unusual interest in Baccarati. You tell me you've seen him on Mars, and now you've sneaked into the file section with false credentials. Commander, I, I need your help. Listen to me, please. Okay. Commander, look out! Uh, get your hands out, Cody. You two get it. Rocket Rocket. It's Prince Baccarati. Yes. Prince Baccarati, the real prince. I'm sure you came just in time. I got a buzz gun here, Corey, so don't attempt any hero Well, yeah, here you are. You do look like Buckaroo. Naturally. I'm his twin brother's old time. His twin brother? Well, I didn't know Listen, that... Listen, all of you. There is only one thing my brother and I have in common. Our hatred of Commander Corey. With you out of the way, either of us could have ruled the United Planet. That's flattering, old time, but not necessarily true. Oh, yes, it is. And I'm going to see what's now. The guard at the exit is unconscious. Sarkane and I can be out of here with my brother's secret records in just a few seconds. Get out of the line of fire, Sarkane. I'm going to bless Corey and the cadet. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. You just shoot it. And boom, watch it go. A direct hit every time. Because the cosmic rocket is guided by you from the trigger of its stainless steel launching gun. And that gun's got a special spring, powered for long-distance flights or short hops, up or down its 33-foot nylon cord. Play with a cosmic rocket launcher as often as you like. The rocket and its snap-on double-deck scout car are made of breakproof, shatterproof plastic in beautiful colors, red and yellow. Launch it solo or with one of your pals. Set up your target, rig your sighting line, press the trigger, and away it flies like a shooting star. Hits the target and automatically launches the scout car. Super neat Senior George. That's the Cosmic Rocket Launcher. Easy to play with, easy to get. Ready with your pencils and papers, space patrollers? Here's how. Send a rice check 
or wheat checks box top, or send a special premium panel from the side of a Nestle's quick can or the lid, together with your name and address, and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Image of Evil. In the records division of Space Patrol headquarters, Buzz and Happy cornered Aaron Sarkane in the act of stealing a file of secret documents on the arch-criminal Prince Baccarati. Baccarati's twin brother, Zoltan, surprised the space patrolman and is now threatening to destroy them with a blast gun. Start toward the exit, Sarkane. I'll take care of Cory and the cadets. Yes, Your Highness. Commander, he's a living image of Prince Baccarati. Yes, yeah, and just as evil. No, Cory. I'm not evil. I'm only getting what was originally mine. My brother deprived me of my heritage. He misused the power he took from me. But with these records, I can find the fortune he hid. The treasure he concealed on half a dozen planets. Well, forgetting those papers are told. A code that even our top photographers couldn't track. No, I shall have no trouble, Commander. For ages, the Baccaratis have had their own family secrets. Your Highness, let's get out of here. In a moment, Sarkane. Baccarati, why did you send Sarkane to my office and tell me he'd seen your brother on Mars? Merely to create a confusion. I reasoned that if Prince Baccarati was being seen everywhere, you space patrollers would cease paying attention to any of the reports, and I could travel as I pleased. Otherwise, you'd have to alter your appearance by plastic surgery. Exactly. And that, of course, is unthinkable. Why? Any change would be an improvement. I can't expect a peasant to appreciate the noble countenance of a Baccarati. Look at this face. It has the Baccarati brow. The Baccarati nose, the Baccarati chin. I ask you, where have you seen anything like it? Hmm. Uh, on a pack rat in a Venus warehouse. What's that? The general alarm. And you won't be able to escape. The exit is locked. That's impossible. I knocked the guard out with a ray gun. If he doesn't ring in every three minutes, the alarm sounds and the exit's locked automatically. You trapped. I knew we shouldn't have come Shut in. Shut up, Sarkane. Commander Corey and Natalie has a master key. Search him. Yes, your Highness. I've got it. Now, let's get out of here. Corey, I can't finish you with the blast gun. The guards would hear it. This ray gun will have to do for now. Now, Sarkin, let's get out of here. By the time guards reached Buzz and Happy, Baccarati and Sarkin have escaped from the records division. An hour passes before the effects of the ray gun wear off, and Buzz is able to issue an all tenant alarm for Baccarati. Now, in his central office, Buzz picks up the space phone and turns to Happy. That's all we can do right now, Happy. But inside of an hour, every space patrol in the solar system will be looking for Zoltan Baccarat. It's going to be tough on those doubles of his. Well, they can easily prove who they are. Well, the original Prince Baccarat was bad enough. But this twin of his, wow. Zoltan may be worse. He feels that his brother gave him a raw deal, so he's out to make up for lost time. I guess the first thing he'll try to do is pick up some of the money his brother stashed all around over the solar system. I mean, after he deciphers those coded papers and sold from the fire. He'll probably lie low and have someone else pick up the money. But if the entire space patrol alerted, we'll get it eventually. Well, let's get to the spaceport. Yes, sir. Bring the data on the cosmic rocket launcher. I'll brief you while we're on the flight to Saturn. Between orbits of Jupiter and Saturn, a private space cruiser follows a vector remote from the regular space lanes. Aaron Sarkane carefully watches the viewscope screen while Zoltan Baccarati barks instructions to his henchman by space phone. Take care of that immediately. Remember, I will tolerate no mistake. Baccarati out. You see, Sarkane, there is nothing to worry about. Soon I will have most of my brother's money. And with that, I can rule the universe. But Cory knows you're out. Or he is my chief obstacle. However, he will not oppose me for long. In a few hours, I will be rid of Corey for good. Thank you, Your Highness. I don't like the idea. Your opinion means nothing to me, Sarkane. You are like most men, ruled by fear, limited by a lack of imagination. But I am a fucker. Remember, what is an obstacle to an ant is not an obstacle to an eagle. And I, Sarkane, am an eagle. Yes, Your Highness. In a few hours, Corey will be out beyond the spot in orbit, casting the cosmic rocket. There is my opportunity to destroy him. One of my spies on Saturn has given me the test vector Corey will use. And you expect me to cast that old robot control cruiser into the rocket? Ah, it will be easy. 
Even if Corey sees the cruiser, he won't expect an attack. Suddenly, it will be upon him. And once the test ship is in range of the automatic target selector, the cruiser will crash into Corey's ship. He can't avoid it. But suppose it lost the cruiser before him. That problem has been taken care of. All right, Tarkin, take me to Jupiter. I'll wait there while you finish Corey. If you follow my instructions, your control ship will never be detected. At the Saturn test base, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are at the controls of the new rocket ship, ready for blast-off, making a final checkup. Scout car relief mechanism in order, Commander. Stand by for blast-off. Standing by, sir. Remember, the first man to recover from blackout presses the automatic space upon signal to notify base control. Yes, sir. And there's a green warning light from base operations now. The kickoff buzzer press the rocket launching control. Up, ship, and away. It's all right, Hap. I've already taken care of it. Oh. Hey, how long have I been out? Take a look at the vector indicator. Look, the rocket, we're nearly to the first test point. Right. We've run to 8 G's acceleration for 30 minutes. I came through shortly after the automatic control cut down to 1 G. There's Saturn moon number 8 in the viewscope, sir. That's our first objective, right? Just the proximity release control for the scout car, huh? Yes, sir. 1,000 years. You know the procedure? Yeah. I board the scout car. After automatic ejection, I pilot the scout car to moon number eight, land, and then at a signal from you, I blast off and attach to the rocket ship again. Right. The wait, huh? There's a ship crossing our test vector. What are you doing out here? Hey, it's a private cruiser. An odd place for a private cruiser to be. Thousands of BUs off the space line. Hey, that pilot must be crazy. He suddenly changed vector right toward us. He's not trying evasive action, so it's up to us. Fire starboard rockets. Commander, he's still coming at us. He changed direction just when we did. Yeah, that ship is a robot-controlled guided missile. Somebody's deliberately trying to wreck us. Oh, good rocket. If you don't blow up that cruiser, it's going to hit us. Stand by to fire space torpedoes. Standing by, sir. Fire number one. Commander, the firing controls are jammed. We're going to crash. We've got one more trick. How do you trick a missile? To throw it a bone. A bone? A scout car. We release the scout car and swerve suddenly. The robot seeker may hold on to the scout car. We haven't much time, sir. Release scout car. There it goes, zooming out ahead of us. Right to the robot. I'm going to change course. It worked, Commander. The cruiser didn't swerve. It stayed right on the beam, headed for that scout car. Wow. Well, that takes care of the robot ship. Yes. The cost of the scout car. Am I glad you thought of ejecting your car? I'm surprised the robot ship didn't keep on after us. After all, this ship is so much bigger than the scout car. Yes, yeah, but when we shot the scout car on ahead, it returned stronger impulses with the robot guiding mechanism than this ship did. No, well, somebody certainly doesn't like us. Yes, I'm anxious to know who it is. It must be fairly close. It'd have to be in order to have brought that robot ship exactly across our vector the way they did. I'll cut on the viewscope scanner, sir. Our came to Baccarat. Baccarat here. It worked, Your Highness. I just saw the explosion. Very good. Now come to Jupiter immediately. Put Corey out of the way and start putting my friends in operation. Wait. I just saw something in the view, Corey. I don't understand it. It's the rocket ship. What? It isn't even hard. I'm sure the rocket ship crashed into it. I saw the explosion. Corey must have fixed the space torpedo mechanism. It's blown after robot. Your Highness. I, I think he's stifling me. The ship is coming toward me. What, what do I do now? That is up for you, Sarkey. From now on, you're on your own. Goodbye, Sarkey. Your Highness, help me, please. Your Highness, please. We're gaining on him, Commander. Let's make a race out of it. Let's get this torpedo mechanism fixed. I'll keep working on the map. I'll try to contact him. Manicoria aboard test rocket ship CL-85 calling private cruiser class C now in 35 degree heading towards Saturn moon number 8. Acknowledge. Manicoria calling private cruiser class C. I'm five DUs astern of you. Cut your rockets and prepare to be boarded. You never come aboard this ship, buddy. Commander, it's Barkane. Barkane, is Baccarati aboard? Answer me. Answer me. Make a mark. Uh, if I tell you where to find Baccarati, will you give me a break? I don't make deals with crooks. Thank you, mate. I'll tell you this. Never get aboard this ship. 
Commander, I found the trouble. The firing mechanism is okay now. Good. Then the torpedo over Farquhar's ship. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay, now you're going to surrender? All right, fire number one here. How about it, Sarkane? We can come closer, you know. All right, have fire two. No, it's me. No, I don't Hold it, now. All right, Sarkane, cut your rocket. Yes, sir. We join airlocks, come into this ship. And remember, we'll have ray guns ready, so don't try anything. I won't, Commander. I give you my word. <laughs> That's a lot of assurance. I mean, uh, I won't give you any trouble. I'll tell you where you can find Baccarat. He's hiding out a few miles from Jupiter City. Thank you, Sarkane. Baccarat? He's been listening. Wait a minute. Yes, Commander. I've been eavesdropping. I was disappointed to learn that my plan had failed. But the next time, you won't be so lucky. Your twin brother tried to get me too, Baccarati. You know where he is. In fact, Baccarati, I guarantee that you and your brother will soon have a family reunion. In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Brought to you by Rice Checks and Wheat Checks. The bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Wind it up, put it in your pocket, take your own cosmic rocket launcher with you wherever you go. You can do it, Space Patrollers, because that slick-looking rocket and neat double-deck scout car are made of real, durable plastic. Swell, bright colors, red and yellow. And don't forget, all 33 feet of that special nylon thread is breakproof. The launching gun is of sturdy stainless steel with long-distance power built right into it. Right, Captain Tufeld. Space Patroller, this is Commander Corey. I want every one of you to have this exact pocket-sized model of my own cosmic rocket launcher. Operates just like mine, too. A big six-inch rocket whizzes down a nylon launching cord, hits a target, and automatically launches the double-deck snap-on scout car. And there's a space inside the scout car for important secret messages. Now, gang, listen while Captain Tufeld tells you how to get yours. To get your cosmic rocket launcher, send the rice checks or wheat checks box top or send a special premium panel from the side of a Nestle's quick can or the lid, together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have trapped Prince Baccarati in his retreat on Neptune. Keep it covered, Happy. If he makes one move, use your ray gun. Yes, sir. What's that noise? Nothing to be alarmed about. Oh, my hand! The ray gun is red hot. I, I couldn't hold it. Baccarati, what... Uh, Commander, our gun's melted. Vaporized. This blaster is still all right. And if either of you move, I'll be glad to prove it. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Phantom Visitor. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Deverett. Other players were Bela Kovach, Norman Jolly, and Ken Mayer, Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday for exciting action on Space Patrol! Space Patrol was brought to you today by Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those famous Nestle chocolate bars. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC.